Hello, I'm Carolyn Herbert from the Finance News Network and joining me to discuss its new lithium joint venture in Chile and project plans is Lithium Power International CEO Martin Holland. Martin, welcome back. Thank you. Now for investors who aren't familiar, can you start by giving us an introduction to Lithium Power International? So Lithium Power International was incorporated to focus on the commodity lithium and to be a pure play lithium explorer and now developer. Uh, recently IPO'd in June 2016, we raised $8 million into our IPO um, and now we're looking to advance our projects we have inside the company. And Marty, now to the Maracunga project, what attracted you to it, uh, what does it contain and what is planned? So the asset itself is a world-class lithium brine deposit. Uh, it's probably, it's been rated the fourth best deposit in the world as it currently sits and with further exploration it can get to being the second best lithium brine deposit in, in the world and second only to that as the Atacama which is run by Sokumin. The grade itself is very attractive, it's almost twice the grade as the Argentinian assets such as Orocobre etc. Um, and there's also a, a good credit of potash as a byproduct as well, which will which will become quite valuable as a, as the time moves on. Um, a number of other reasons as well. That a number of the tenements are on old code, which allows exploiting of the lithium straight away. Um, it's right next to the main highway, which is Highway 31, which um, joins Argentina and Chile together. Uh, very close to port. That um, the Argentine assets have to cross border pay extra taxes to Chile, etc., and further away from ports. So we're close to the port, close to infrastructure, the highest grade deposit sort of going around, closest to production, and the list goes on. So we're very excited for a company to have this opportunity um, to earn into a, a project with a Chilean family office who is very well respected, um, and we'll continue with our government our relations building um, and trying to get this project into production over the next few years. So what is the size of your portfolio in total now and where does this put you in comparison to other lithium explorers? Great, so the size of, of our portfolio in total um, is now purely diversified between both hard rock spodumene in Western Australia and lithium brine assets in South America. So we have two assets in hard rock um, in, in the Pilbara region, uh, which is the new hotspot for hard rock and lithium. Uh, we've also got assets in the Greenbushes region next to the largest lithium mine in the world. Uh, and we have a, f a further asset uh, in Argentina and as we talked about recently uh, the, the overall diversification has now been uh, pretty much finalised uh, from the recent joint venture we've done on one of the best pre-production lithium deposits in the world. And Martin, in terms of news flow, what can shareholders expect over the coming months? So shareholders will expect the closure of the joint venture ag agreement. Uh, shareholders will also get uh, exposure to the 16 diamond holes that we're putting in to the current project uh, in Chile. Uh, we're expecting to have a resource upgrade by the year end uh, with an updated 43101 report and a new updated short classification on, um, on this deposit. And finally, Martin, with Tesla opening its multi-billion dollar gigafactory, the future of lithium looks pretty well assured. So what's your long-term ambition for Lithium Power International? Well, our, our long-term ambition necessarily isn't that long-term. Uh, we'll have a bankable feasibility study completed by the end of, of 2018. We'll aim to, to get into production 2019, 2020, um, and then the world will open up to us. We believe that the demand is going to continue for this commodity, um, and the likes of Tesla is one company that will be after the supply that will come from these projects that we have inside Lithium Power, though there's many other companies out there as well, and um, I can talk for a for a long period of time about um, all the other companies such as Toyota, Mitsubishi, Foxconn, uh, BYD, which Samsung just invested $500 million into recently, uh, and, and, and the list continues. So I think we're in a, in a great position as a company, uh, and I believe that the demand will continue, uh, and Lithium Power will be a company that will be able to supply the market. Martin Holland, thanks for the update on Lithium Power International. Great, and thanks for your time again, I appreciate it.